Here we are in Haleakala Crater, and today we're going to talk about hash tables. I'll start with an introduction and the chaining method. Hash tables, or tables in general, provide a subset of the dynamic set operations. Today we're going to be concerned with insertion, deletion, and searching. An example might be a symbol table in a compiler, where you need to keep track of variables and look them up. Hash tables are a generalization of arrays. Arrays can be seen as a simple version of a hash table using what is called direct addressing. In this approach, you um, allocate a table big enough to have a slot for every possible key in your universe of keys, and then you might say, okay, store stuff under those keys in the table um, through direct addressing. If something has key 2, go to position 2. If something has key 5, go to key position 5. And this, of course, is a, a very straightforward way to uh, access information. Let's just write out the um, operations that you would do here. So to search for an item, you simply get its key, take its key and go to the table at that key. To insert an item X, you generate a key for X and assign the item at that position, and to delete, you generate the key for X and wipe out what's at that position. Pretty straightforward. Of course, the problem with this is that if the number of possible keys in the universe of keys here is much larger than the size of the table that we want to allocate, uh, in other words, we're going to use just a small subset of this universe of keys, then say the universe is much bigger, then we're wasting space. So the basic idea of a hash table is to do it just like this, except that we're going to make the size of the table proportional to the number of keys expected to be stored, rather than to the total number of keys. In other words, the uh, size of the key set is going to be a subset of the universe um, where um, it's going to be substantially less than the size of the universe. So the situation looks like this. Out of this big universe of keys, there's a whole bunch of keys out there, and we may not use some of them, but there's a subset of the, them, the actual keys here, that we will use. Um, we may not know what the actual keys are in advance, but perhaps we can, we can bound the size to this. We can say, well, we expect to have no more than m keys, for example. And so then we might set the table up to be of size m. Um, often we use zero base indexing because we're going to be using modular arithmetic later on. Uh, so this is actually, um, these tables are often uh, allocated to uh, from zero to m minus one to be a table of size m. So. So we've got some keys here, and they're going to map to, um, you know, actual positions in the table. Um, sometimes, if we're lucky, they might map to different positions. But we might have situations where uh, two different keys map to the same position. So uh, this mapping is done by a hash function, uh, h, and h takes a key. Um, and then it produces something in 0 to m minus 1. It produces a position in the, in the hash table. Uh, so h has to take as its uh, input domain. Uh, it goes from the universe of keys um, to what I just wrote out here, the set of possible keys in the, in the uh, table. So for example, here we had uh, h of uh, k1 is equal to 2, and here we had the collision, h of k5 is equal to 5, and uh, h of k3 equals 5. Uh, so uh, a collision right here. So what do we do about the collision? That's the branch point here where we take two different approaches. One is called chaining, the other is called opening open addressing. And so we're going to look at chaining first. The chaining approach to resolving collisions 
deals with it by going ahead and putting all of the keys that map to a slot in that slot, but representing them as a linked list. So you have a linked list of all the items that are that hash to that particular location. So for example here, um, key 1 uh, hashed to position 2, uh, key 4 hashed to position 3, key 5 hashed to position 5, and now let's say that we get uh, over here we got key 3 also hashes, hashes the position 5 uh, so then we get a collision so what we do is we just extend this linked list we're using doubly linked list just to make it easier to um, delete when you find an item you want to delete you don't want to have to search the list again okay so this points back and uh, this is now the end of the list and we're going to store in there the uh, K3 that just hashed there. So that's how it works. That's how it resolves collisions. And of course you don't have to use doubly linked lists. Um, you can use uh, sentinels if you want. You know, any variation on the uh, list representation can be used here. So let's take a look at what the, uh, the procedures look like. The search, insert, and delete. Let's start with insertion. So to insert, you simply uh, hash the key to get the position in the table. That will find the list that you want to insert in, and then insert exit the head of that list using the standard linked list procedures. For search, just again hash the key to the table and search for the key in the list using standard linked list procedures. And of course for delete, you would you would just go to the list that the key maps to through the hash function and delete x from that list. So with your linked list procedures already implemented, you can then use them to easily implement chaining and hash tables. In the next screencast, I'll do the analysis of how long these operations take. Um, but while I have this diagram up, I just want to briefly say uh, what the other approach is open addressing approach. Okay, in open addressing we proceed as with direct addressing. We put K1 there and we put K4 there and we put K5 here. But when you get a collision, K5 is already, this, is already occupying this position. We want to put K3 there. Open, open addressing will take a hop. It will hop somewhere else. And there's different approaches. It might hop to the next position or it might use some fancy uh, algorithm to hop somewhere else in the table and that's going to be the crux of open addressing. So that's the end of the brief introduction to hash tables and chaining. And next we'll go on to analysis of chaining.